American bullfrog is immense, it's unapologetically dominant, and it is the loudest voice in the pond and the last creature many small animals ever see. I'm Aaron Capoli, and in this episode of Frog Week 2025, we explore the places where the bullfrog reigns, from remote wetlands to roadside marshes, even in our own backyards. You often hear them before you see them, a deep, resonating jug room echoing across the water like a warning. But when you finally spot one, you realize you've been living alongside a predator more powerful and complicated than you imagined. There Every pond has a ruler, not by vote, not by choice, but by size, strength, and sheer appetite. And across the ponds in western and central Pennsylvania, it remains unchallenged and undisputed as the pond king because there is no amphibian that can challenge the American bullfrog for the throne. Nothing gets quite the size of a bullfrog, and nothing is able to escape once the bullfrog sets its sights on making whatever prey item it wants, its midnight snack. Bullfrogs can grow up to 8 or 9 inches and weigh over a pound, making them the largest true frog on the continent. And they are voracious predators. They ambush their prey items. They'll eat anything that they can overpower and swallow. Regarding insects, fish, snakes, birds, many other frogs and toads, and even small mammals. I've actually seen American bullfrogs eat small ducks and even baby snapping turtles. They even will consume their own species. They are known for preying on smaller bullfrogs, making their population self-regulating, but also competitively dominant. These frogs are equipped with wide mouths and powerful jaws that allow them to consume large prey items, sometimes nearly half their own body size. And their long legs, their muscular back legs are so powerful, it enables them to leap up to six feet in a single hop. Even though the American bullfrog is native to Pennsylvania and the eastern United States, it's also been introduced to the west where it's considered invasive and ecologically damaging. It's been challenging the red-legged and yellow-legged frog reintroductions, both critically endangered pond species that need to live in the same areas where the bullfrogs are now outcompeting them. The one lens, the one camera because it's not waterproof, but... Kind of see that as the bullfrog. I am deadlocked on him. There's a fourth frog in there, I think. One night, I was coming home from a nature walk I just hosted, teaching others to listen for frog calls and look for salamanders, and to value every life near the woods and this in the pond. This is the biggest frog I've ever road rescued. As I stepped into my backyard after this feel-good moment, I saw a bullfrog finishing its hunt. A full-grown American toad half swallowed feet twitching in its jaws and without thinking fight or flight kicked in I reached in I pulled the toad carefully out of the frog's mouth after the bullfrog hissed at me it looked for another prey item and in that moment I thought I might have done something good by saving a life but what came next is harder to talk about see I reacted because I relocated both of the two bullfrogs who lived in my pond. I told myself it was for the safety of the toads, but now there are no frogs here at all. And that silence has a weight to it. This is a story about the American bullfrog, but more than that, it's about the tension between protecting and controlling 
between stepping in and letting go, and how even with the best intentions, conservation can leave us with questions that echo long after the calls fade. As you can see, the bullfrogs were not eager to hop into an even larger pond, especially because the first rescue that I showed of this bullfrog was in November, and this bullfrog overwintered in our pond and the neighbors for many years, and now unceremoniously saying goodbye like this, in my opinion, was very emotional and also very disrespectful. In June, nearly July, the pond sits empty and the silence speaks louder than the bullfrog's call ever did. I thought I was protecting the toads, and maybe I did, but I also removed something bigger, something wild. I took away a predator that had made this pond its home, and now no one calls this place home. In trying to preserve life, I also erased presence. I interrupted a process older than me, and now I walk past this pond and wonder if I made the right decision, because all that's left is the memory of what once was. In the wild, bullfrogs thrive. In the backyard, they're sadly now gone, and I'm still standing between grateful for what I saved, but grieving what I lost. Our backyard and the neighbors have become a sanctuary for the American toads who were declining nearly 11 years ago. The American toad population in my neighborhood almost collapsed and we took action once we saw the toads coming to our pond for the first time nearly 11 years ago. And since then the population has been recovering. The American toads are now thriving in what we call a toad sanctuary or even a toad hatchery. These bullfrogs were standing in the way of that and I had to choose what I wanted more. Did I want to allow these bullfrogs that were probably born somewhere in the neighborhood that chose to make our pond their home every year, or did I want to continue this hatchery and this successful opportunity for the American toads, releasing these American bullfrogs to a much larger pond, a place that I felt they would thrive. They didn't want to go. There's a strange kind of silence that settles over a place when a decision has been made and you can't go back. The pond is still, the toads are safe, but something is missing. We don't talk enough about the weight of conservation and the part where we second guess ourselves, the part where doing what feels right leaves behind something that feels wrong. We get more vulnerable and we showcase the urgency even more in Frog Week 2025 than ever before. I hope that you'll continue to watch these gripping stories about the local and native frog and toad populations across western and central Pennsylvania. We have a lot more in store for you. Please consider liking and subscribing. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks.